Hey everyone, Madurai Bread here. Pokemon Platinum with only one Ponyta was fun, but a very close solo run. Let's follow that up with a fun team run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only version exclusives? I'm really pumped for this. It's only been a few weeks since the red version exclusives run, and I've really been excited to do it again. Here's how it works. We look at the version exclusive chart, and I'm only allowed to use things from our version. So Pokemon that are in gold, but not in silver. That leaves us with Teddy Ursa, Mankey, Growlithe, Mantine, Gligar, and Spinarak. It's a lopsided and weird team, but that's the beauty of these version exclusive runs. Let's see if this team is any good. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. Teddy Ursa is on the list, so I'm feeling pretty confident, but I'm already anticipating a lot of interesting ups and downs. I'm really pumped for this run. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use version exclusives. I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. Also, sorry if I sound very slightly a horse today. I think I might be getting sick, but I'm not totally sure. Bear with me. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokémon Randomizer to replace Quilava with Growlithe so that we can start with a version exclusive. I picked Growlithe because I don't want to start with anything super strong like Mantine or Teddy Ursa, but Gliscor is absolutely horrible in this game, and Spinarak is at the start of the game anyway, so I may as well start with something else. That left Mankey and Growlithe, and I figured that I'd need Ember to hit our rival's ghosts. That or Nightshade with Spinarak. So, early travel. Of course I go ahead and catch Spinarak right away. I'd be crazy not to. I think this is already going to make the run way more interesting. We rarely get to start with two Pokémon on a team run. Spinarak won't be great for a while, but once it has Nightshade at level 17, it's going to be pretty useful. Growlithe, on the other hand, I just really want to hit level 50 before the run is over. That way he gets Flamethrower and I can finally evolve him early. I mean, if we get lucky and Bill's dad's house gives us a Fire Stone, which it might just not, because getting Elemental Stones in Gen 2 is really brutal. We had a Growlithe in the Red version exclusive run as well, and I never ended up evolving him in that one. Maybe he will in this one? Plus, a nice thing about starting with a fire type on the team is that we can beat Bellsprout Tower for extra early experience very easily. I figure it's pretty much just up to Growlithe to beat the upcoming Flying Gym, although switching to Spinarak to remove accuracy debuffs might be useful. I spent most of the tower switch training Spinarak. It's pretty much dead weight until it learns Nightshade, so I may as well start leveling it early. So at the Flying Gym, I really wasn't messing around. I knew they'd be spamming Mud Slap because we're part flying, so I used Flash with Spinarak early against both of his Pokémon. Problem is, the one against Pidgeotto failed. Growlithe was just hardly strong enough to brute force it will hurt, but it was surprisingly close. Alright, so the next little chunk of the game is normally a bit slow, but I'm actually thinking it won't be so bad for once. Normally the Bug Gym can be difficult because of Scyther building up Fury Cutter and our rival having a Ghost type, but Growlithe can handle both of those pretty well right now. Croconaw could be an issue, but who knows, maybe after Slowpoke well in the Bug Gym it just won't be a problem. We can fight tons of trainers for the experience in there. As expected, the Bug Gym goes pretty well. Fury Cutter wasn't as much of a problem as I was expecting, so it was an easy first try. I forgot that Fire actually resists Bug. Honestly, there's so few attacking Bug moves in these early games that it's kind of hard to remember what's resisted by it. Okay, so this rival fight actually took quite a few tries. Croconaw can absolutely demolish us, so I had to send in Spinarak to use Flash a bunch. It took a few tries before this actually worked, but eventually we got him to just start missing with Water Gun long enough for Growlithe to knock him out. Karma came back to bite us though as Zubat confused us, and we just kept hitting ourselves in confusion. I thought we were going to lose when we ended up surviving with just 4 health, shaking off the confusion, and landing the final hit. But right after the fight, Youngster Joey called to tell you to follow me on Twitter, where I pull back the curtain and show you the behind the scenes on what my streaming setup looks like. So professional! This is an actual screenshot of me streaming my research for this run. Uh, you can see how the videos turn out the way that they do. Now this is the part that I've been worried about, the upcoming normal gym. This one often doesn't go well, but it's the last obstacle between us and getting a new Pokémon. 
The problem is that Miltank's rollout is going to be super effective against our whole team, and there's nothing new that we can catch yet. I mean, I guess I could go catch another Growlithe, but I fail to see how that's going to help us against the Rock-type move. I did end up thinking of a good idea, though. I picked up Dig from the National Park and gave it to Growlithe. I don't really know how well this is going to work, since it might just use Milk Drink after missing her rollout, but we could use it to make sure that she never builds up too strong. It's worth a try. Okay, so I tried the gym a bunch of tries at the level that we got there at, but we really aren't ready yet. I mean, we're losing half of our health to Clefairy just about every attempt just from Double Slap. I haven't had issues with rollout thanks to Flash, and Dig stops it from really building up, but she's faster than us, hits harder than us, is tankier than us, and has a healing move. We really do not stand a chance until I come back at a higher level. But before I can get to a higher level, Youngster Joey called to tell you to follow me on Twitter where you can see such amazing threads as me tweeting out pictures of Youngster Joey calling me. That's a selling point for my Twitter, right? Man, he, uh, sure did call me a lot of times. Be thankful I don't do the gag every single time, because we would be here all day. I could have probably extended this video by 10 to 15 minutes if I did all of these Youngster Joey gags. Okay, so I tried this with Growlithe at level 23 a dozen times and failed. So here we are at level 25, and I think we just won because the strategy I was going for worked out way better than usual. What I try to do each time is have Spinarak use Flash, then Scary Face, then back to Flash against Miltank. Usually I get one Flash, two for lucky, and never Scary Face. This time we get awesome luck with Stomp's missing tons, so we ended up getting four flashes and a scary face in. We have awful luck with missing tons of turns from Attract, but it's fine. By the time Growlithe came out, Miltank had been blinded four times, so all of its Stomp's just missed. I thought she'd start using Milk Drink, but she never did, so we just won. That was great. With that done, the first thing I do is walk through Mount Mortar to get to the patch of grass where we can catch Mankey. I love Mankey, he is the best. Hey, this is the second Pokemon that was in the red exclusive run as well. It's kind of weird, never noticed that there was that overlap. You know what, now that I think about it, I wonder if there's overlap between the silver exclusive team and the blue exclusive team. I've never actually checked. Uh, that's not in the script, by the way, I'm just wondering that out loud right now. Well, I guess we'll find out when I do those runs. <laughs> I mean, I'll find out when I do those runs. You're all going to go Google it now because you're probably curious. Uh, but then you're going to tweet it at me, so then I'll know. Okay. Okay. Past me doing this voiceover doesn't know. But present me that you're hearing say this right now, he probably knows because you probably told him. This is getting meta. <laughs> anyway, as cool as Mankey is, he's probably not going to be any use in the upcoming Ghost Gym. I think that's just going to be up to Growlithe. I'm not really too worried though, Bite should do a great job. I'll do the dance hall to get Surf, beat the Ghost Gym, and then we can go catch a stronger Pokemon. Yeah, so the Ghost Gym was literally a no damage sweep on the first try because the Gengar that was faster than us blew every chance to stop us by missing Hypnosis. I can't really say that I'm surprised. Between Hypnosis's super low accuracy and the built-in mischance whenever the AI uses status affliction moves in Gen 2, that Hypnosis would have had to have gotten very lucky to even hit. Alright, so I go ahead and surf south to catch Mantine right away. I remember this thing being really fun in the No New Moves playthrough that I did forever ago, so I'm pumped to use it with better moves now. Obviously, I teach it Surf right away. This thing is going to be one of our main Pokémon for sure. Did you know that it's got a base special defense of 140? That's just insane. It's a shame it doesn't learn Wing Attack until level 40, or else it would be more useful in the upcoming Fighting Gym. You know, Growlithe can probably handle the Steel Gym on its own, and I don't think the Fighting Gym is going to be that bad either. Is this going to be a smooth mid-game? Man, never mind. Fighting Gym was worse than I thought. Primeape isn't too bad, but I forgot that Poliwrath has Surf. Normally he's not bad because he spams low accuracy moves, but with Growlithe being our ace, he spams Surf instead. Uh, it's alright, I've got an idea. I go do the Rocket Hideout first instead. Doing the Lake of Rage gets us the experience share, so I can just use the Rocket Hideout as a place to help catch up Mankey in levels. He's got potential, he just needs some experience. Plus, clearing this place out early lets us get the TM for Sludge Bomb, and that's going to be our only really strong attacking move that Ariados can learn, so I'll give it to him right away. Who knows, maybe we'll even beat the Ice Gym as soon as we walk out of here. 
Hey, the ice gym was pretty easy. Mankey ended up pulling his weight pretty well in the whole fight, to the point that if I had just evolved him, then I bet he could have beaten the whole gym by himself. Instead, I had to use Growlithe and Ariados for Dugong and Peliswine, but it was still a pretty easy fight. The experience share is on Mantine now too, so it should be ready to use pretty soon. Time for the Steel Gym. First is Magnemite, so I tried using Mankey to beat it. We managed to do it, but Mankey dropped to only 4 health in the process. Next is Steelix, the real threat. Mantine was doing a great job with Surf, but Steelix's sunny day made it so that we couldn't get a two-shot on him. Because of that, we took huge damage from Rock Throw and gave her time to use a Hyper Potion. We hit some more Surfs, but the sunny day made it too weak and we went down. Thankfully, Steelix is weak to fire too, so I sent in Growlithe to take advantage of that sunny day and finish her off with Ember. Last is Magnemite, but we have Ember, so although the sun faded, we still took it out in a couple of hits. Right after that was the fighting gym, and at first it was kind of annoying, because we could obviously win, but we were stuck in a brutal confusion and sleep loop with Ariados. But I guess the Pokemon gods got fed up with that strategy though and threw me a bone because near the end, Poliwrath missed four dynamic punches in a row. None of those punches would have stopped us, but they absolutely would have made the fight longer. Can you see why I never use dynamic punch? <laughs> now that we've cleared all the early gems, Radio Tower is under attack. It's a decent enough place to get some experience since there's a lot of trainers in here, but most of them aren't really that hard to fight. It's a last minute chance to get even more experience so that we're ready for the rival fight. Although, I don't really think we're gonna need it. Yeah, that's what I expected. I was able to take down his whole team easily with just Growlithe and Ariados, and this is with us being around the same level as him. Not bad at all. Guys, it's finally time to get our last two Pokemon. Uh, it's our best one and our worst one. For our best, Teddy Ursa. Not only does it have a great type coverage with elemental punches, but it's an incredible powerhouse with normal moves. Plus, we get to evolve him, so we can look forward to 130 base attack. Easily our overall strongest Pokemon. For the worst? Gligar. This thing is shockingly bad in Gen 2. By both level up and TM, it cannot learn a single flying or ground move, despite being flying and ground type. Really, most of its moveset sucks, and I've got no idea what I'm even gonna do with it. Iron Tail? I guess? I may as well. I'm not sure this is gonna get much use. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go back to Goldenrod and buy the Ice Punch and Thunder Punch TMs for Teddy Ursa. We'll need Ice Punch in that upcoming Dragon Gym. I'm gonna have to grind it up quite a bit before I do that. Speaking of... Alright, I grinded Teddy Ursa all the way to level 36 and had it evolve because this gym is crazy. First is three Dragonairs, and I had Ursaring fight them. It takes two Ice Punches to take them down, but they always paralyze us and hit us a ton, so I occasionally have to use Rest to heal back up. The strategy worked great though, and we got past all of the Dragonairs. This did take a few tries though. Kingdra was much harder. First, I had Ariados spam Sludge Bomb. It did solid damage, and we never missed despite a smoke screen, but she used a Hyper Potion so that we couldn't finish her off quite yet, even with a crit. I sent in Primeape second to do some Karate Chops, and thanks to a miss, we weren't able to get the finishing blow. We got her down to a sliver and fainted. Growlithe just got outsped and one shot with Surf, so I sent in Mantine. We took huge damage off a Hyper Beam that I was praying wouldn't crit, then just finished it off with Surf. Man, that Kingdra really did some damage. Hey, that means we're finally on the road to the end of the game. Now, I have to pick my team a little bit more carefully for now, because I have to ditch one of them for an HM Pokemon to get me to the Elite Four. That means we're down one member of the team for the next rival fight. Because I'm sane, I deposited Gligar, because he's just completely awful in this game. I've been leveling him up with an experience share, but it's probably not worth it. I'll get him back on the team for the Elite Four, though, who knows, maybe he'll pull his weight. I think the next rival fight is gonna go fine, but I really don't think we're ready for the Pokemon Champion yet. Uh, really, it's all up to Ursaring to very quickly become a beast, because he is gonna be vital in the Lance fight. Alright, well, the rival fight went the exact same way as last time, but with us losing very slightly more health on Growlithe. How's he over here asking why did I lose when he did the same thing as last time? This guy's trying to build a balanced team over here and still just loses to my random gimmick teams all day. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. 
Well, we do have some good Pokemon on the team, and there's a lot of potential here, but most of our team are a much lower level than all of the Elite Four. In fact, I don't think any of our Pokemon are as high level as their lowest level Pokemon, but maybe we'll be able to beat some of them anyway? If so, it could be worth grinding by fighting Will. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Psychic Trainer Will. This is a long fight, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like because most of it is us getting squashed. See, Ursaring is the only member of our team that can actually stand up to more than two hits from seemingly any of Will's Pokémon. Ursaring actually does pretty well as long as I can use Rest in time, but really can't win the entire fight on its own yet. That's fine though, I just went down south to grind. There's this great spot here with a healing hut that is a lot faster than going to the Poke Center anyway. I figure that just getting the whole team to level 40 is going to help a lot, but realistically, some of them are going to have to be higher than that before we beat Lance. His team are level 44 to 50, and he's got three pseudo legendaries on his team. I figure that Ursaring will be using Ice Punch for the vast majority of that fight, but we also need to make sure that Mantine is ready to take on Charizard. I'd have to fight Aerodactyl too, but super effective Rock Slide from Aerodactyl might be too much for even Mantine to handle. Ursaring might be something like level 50 before he can take on, at minimum, three Dragonites and a Water Onyx. Okay, time for Will again. The first Zatu goes down in a couple Ice Punches, but we nearly lose Ursaring to a couple hits of Psychic. Out to Growlithe for Jinx, and we lucked out with her using Double Slap twice so that we can just Flame Wheel her into Oblivion. Slowbro had me worried, so I sent in Ursaring and went to sleep with Rest. Psychic was hitting us hard though, so I thought we were doomed, when suddenly Slowbro started spamming Curse for no reason instead of easily finishing us off. So we woke up and started hitting Thunder Punches until he went down. Slowbro absolutely threw that fight. That was crazy. Executor was a two-shot with Ice Beam, but managed to put up a Reflect before going down, and last was Zatu, who we hit with Ice Punch, but it finished us off with Psychic. I tried sending an Ariados to finish it off, but we got outsped in one shot. I guess that was a dumb move. Mantine finished it off right after, just fine. Second is Poison Trainer Koga. First was Ariados, who was really easy with a couple hits of Flame Wheel, and next was Fortress, who was even easier thanks to being double weak to fire. Muck is always kind of terrifying, but this time we lucked out and it missed Toxic, so we took it out pretty fast with Mantine. Out to Ursaring to deal with his Crobat, and of course right away he used Double Team, and we missed an Ice Punch. We hit a second one, but it's clear that we'll need three to take it out. We get hit by Toxic, land another Ice Punch, and then he used a full restore. Right after that, we got crit by wing attack, hit a strong ice punch, then went down. I sent in Gligar to finish it off with Slash, but we missed thanks to the double team, so we ended up losing half of our health before we finally took it out. Last is Venomoth, who I took out with a few wing attacks from Mantine just fine. Third is Fighting Trainer Bruno, and this is a long fight. Right away, I used Mantine against Hitmontop so that he can't use Dig against our flying type. This lets us slowly take him down with Surf, because it was doing more than Wing Attack anyway. Next is Hitmonchan, so I had to switch to Primate to just overpower it with Karate Chops. It worked, but a critical Mach Punch meant that we ended the exchange with only 3 health, so I sent an Ariados to take on Hitmonlee. He got us a Swagger right away while we were using Nightshade, but it was going to be a 3 hit anyway, so I just stuck with it and finished him off easily. Onyx was of course a one-shot with Mantine, and last was Machamp. We did okay damage with Mantine before getting buried in a rock slide. I sent in Ursaring next to use Strength, and we hit really hard just to get one shot in return by Cross Chop. I was hoping we could easily finish it with Growlithe when he used a Max Potion. So although we landed some hits, we still just got one shot by Rock Slide. I sent in Gligar to use Slash. It really didn't do much, but neither did his Cross Chop, so I stuck with it. Thanks to him critting us though, we weren't able to take him out until I sent in our 3 health Primeape to finish it off. Wow, that was a really, really close Bruno fight. Fourth is Dark Trainer Karen. First is Umbreon, and I was kind of hoping Primeape would hit a little harder than it is, but it's alright. The second one crit, and all Umbreon did was miss a sand attack, so nothing happened. Vileplume vs Growlithe went more or less the same way, with Vileplume just failing affliction moves until we got the knockout. Gengar started with Curse, got bit, then used a Destiny Bond, so as we finished it off we lost our Growlithe. Mildly annoying, but it's not too horrible. Although that means that we need to send in our next Pokémon without knowing what she's sending in next. 
That's fine. Mantine was able to take out Murkrow just fine. Next was Houndoom, so I figured we'd just one-shot it, when it outsped us and crit crunch to knock us out. Well, that's not good. Alright, that's fine. Houndoom is frail, so Karate Chop did amazing damage before we got one-shot by yet another crit in return. Out to Ursaring, and Houndoom max potioned back up, but this time the crit gods were in our favor, and we landed the one-shot on them. Finally, Pokémon Champion Lance. Right away, it's Water Onyx, so I used Thunder Punch to just one-shot it. It's probably thanks to the crit, but I'll take it. Next is the first Dragonite, and things go downhill fast. We get paralyzed right away, so although we hit hard with Ice Punch, we might not last the whole fight. We took him down, but not before we lost most of our health to Hyper Beam. The second Dragonite uses Blizzard to take us down before we could rest, so I sent in members one by one to try and whittle it down. Ariados was able to do some okay damage and even poison him, but that didn't last long. Gligar did a tiny amount of damage, but of course he went down in one Blizzard. And when Growlithe came out to finish it off, it just got hyper beamed and went down in one hit. At least that left him open for Mantine to finally finish it off. Next was Aerodactyl though, who nearly one-shot Mantine. We hit a strong Surf, then we finished it off with Hyper Beam. I don't know why it didn't use any other moves to take us out, considering that left him recharging for Primeape to finish him off. Second from last is Charizard though, and we didn't last long against all his flying moves. That was our last Pokemon. Man, we got so far too. Well, you know what? That's fine, because we have the magic of rare candies. The big problem is just the Dragonites. I'm gonna bring Ursaring to level 48 to lead the fight, and the rest of the team is just going up to level 43, so lower than any of Lance's team. Let's see how that goes. Okay, after the levels. Water Onyx still goes down thanks to Paralysis, and we got way luckier against the first Dragonite with Thunder Wave failing. We got hit by Hyper Beam to lose half of our health, but we still took him out. For the second Dragonite, things went even better, with the first Hyper Beam missing. The second one hit to nearly make us faint as we took him out. For Aerodactyl, I used Gligar, and weirdly enough, he was doing a great job. Our Iron Tail isn't incredible, but it did the job, and we even tanked a Hyper Beam to let us get the knockout. That was incredible! Out to Mantine for Charizard, and his Hyper Beam actually didn't do a ton to us. Two Surfs and he was down. Last is his final Dragonite, though. First, Ariados got outsped and one-shot by Fire Blast. Next, Growlithe got outsped and one-shot by Hyper Beam. This is bad. Out to Ursaring, who used the opening to land an Ice Punch and froze him just for him to use a full restore. Our next Ice Punch did great damage, but no freeze. We go down to Outrage. Out to Primeape with Karate Chop and is hardly doing anything at all. We land two hits, but still go down. Our second from last Pokémon is Mantine, and we just need Dragonite to hit itself in confusion from Outrage, but it Hyper Beams us instead. All we have left is one red health Gligar. When we sent him in, outsped Dragonite, and took him out with Slash. Oh my god, Gligar just won the run for us. With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. Gen 2 has all of Kanto in the post-game, including eight gym battles and a secret final boss fight with Red. Seven of those eight gym battles are super easy since they're weaker than that of the Elite Four, so we're gonna skip ahead to the next real challenge, Blue. I made sure to pick up both leftovers on the way, and finally got Growlithe to level 50 so he learned Flamethrower. I'd love to evolve him, but it's incredibly hard to get Firestones in Pokémon Gold, so I think I'm gonna have to just settle with Growlithe for now. Let's get the team up to level 50 so that they're a bit lower than Blue's team, and then we can start making attempts. Right away, we have Pidgeot versus Ursaring. Our Ice Punch instantly crit, though, so we did awesome damage. He Mirror Punched and Ice Punched back at us, but it hardly did anything. We took him out. Alakazam is much tougher as he dropped us to only two health with Psychic as we one-shot him with Strength. I get the feeling Ursaring is pretty much out of the fight. Out to Mantine to one-shot Rhydon, and next is Water Onyx, so I sent Ursaring back in. I was hoping to be faster, but no dice. We went down. Okay, well, our next best answer is Mantine, so I sent it in, tank a Hyper Beam, and confuse him. Quickly, I realized we were doing next to nothing, though, and switched out to Growlithe as Water Onyx hit itself in confusion. Next turn, it one-shot Growlithe. That's exactly what I wanted it to do, just so I could get a safe switch into something else. I used that to send in Ariados and hit Sludge Bomb. Water Onyx made it rain and hit Hydro Pump. We nearly fainted. We hit Sludge Bomb to drop him to a sliver. Then he used a full restore. 
This is brutal. Another sludge bomb hurt, but we went down, out to Prime Ape, and although our cross chops are resisted, we crit for great damage. Hydro Pump almost made us faint, and he used another full restore. We just kept going for cross chop. We hit a few before we went down, out to our second from last Pokemon, Gligar. So I sent him in and used Iron Tail, doing almost nothing. I switched to Slash as he uses Rain Dance, and we crit to nearly make him faint. That's when he does something stupid. He used Hyper Beam when Hydro Pump would have made us faint. So we hung on and took him out with Slash. We're in horrible shape, though. Out to Mantine for RK9, and although Extreme Speed almost makes us faint, Surf is a one-shot on him. Last is Executor, and all we have are two half-dead Pokémon, so I sent in Gligar to Sand Attack in desperation. He hit a Solar Beam to knock us out after two Sand Attacks, and we sent in Mantine to use Confuse Ray and Wing Attack. He really didn't do much damage, but the plan actually worked. He kept hitting himself, we kept hitting him, and our leftovers kept healing us. We took him out despite our team being a lower level than his. That's awesome. He has like a good balanced team, and I have a, a team with a Gligar on it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm shocked that we won that blue fight, but the red fight is way harder. His team starts at level 73, and our team is mostly level 50, so obviously we're just going to rare candy our team up to level 73 to match their weakest Pokemon. I've got to say, though, I think we're actually going to win this at a reasonable level. I love that in these exclusive runs, we end up with totally lopsided and weird teams of otherwise decent Pokémon that I rarely use. Like, I never would have put a Gligar on my team in Pokémon Gold, but I've actually found some uses for it. If we're able to beat Red's well-balanced team of strong Pokémon with our band of misfits at about the same level as him, then I'll be super impressed. Here we are, Gligar vs Pikachu. Believe it or not, we totally stomped him. Like, I know we're ground type, but just using Slash was totally destroying Pikachu. It's funny how even at that high of a level, Gen 2 Pikachu is just really weak. For Blastoise, I sent in Ursaring to use Thunder Punch as he uses his Rain Dance. We did good damage, but we'd need a 3-shot, and Surf was messing us up badly. We got two hits in, but lost Ursaring and had to send in Mantine to overpower him with our own Surf. You know, what with the rain and all. It worked, although he did a bit of damage to us. Espeon is next, so I sent in Gligar to fight it. I always second guess if we're poison or not, but it didn't matter. We took so much damage that although we hit hard with a crit, we still went down fast. Growlithe is next, and I really wish Firestones weren't so hard to get in this game, because if we got to evolve, then we wouldn't have gotten outsped and failed to finish him off. Bite nearly took him out, but Growlithe faints. Out to Mantine, who finally finishes it, but not before getting hit hard with Psychic. Next up is Snorlax, and we don't have much time left, so I sent in Primeape to Karate Chop it. We crit to nearly take it out in one hit, though, and all he used was Amnesia, so we took him out on the next hit. That was awesome! Second from last was his terrifying Charizard, so I sent in Mantine. He used Wing Attack right away, and that's great because it's not Sunny Day! Thanks to that, and a crit, we one-shot him with Surf. Last is Venusaur, but I'm not even worried. We have Ariados, and there's nothing Venusaur can do to us. He can heal a lot with Synthesis, but he can hardly scratch us with his Solar Beam. We took him out, no problem. Beating Red at a lower level than his team. Okay, yet again, these version exclusive runs are awesome. I hate to do a bunch of really similar runs in a row, but I kind of want to do more of these sooner rather than later. Like, would a silver run be easier than the gold run? There's only one way to find out. I really hope you guys like that run. The next week's Pokemon Challenge should be up next Saturday, like usual, with Pokemon Fire Red with only flying types. That actually seems like a super fun team run, and it gives us quite a few Pokemon to choose from. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the Challenge Request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Uh, outro? I guess, like, the big, new, exciting thing I can talk about in the outro that might be relevant to you Pokémon people. I love RimWorld. It's this really, really great strategy RPG colony builder uh, PC game. Really, really fun. And it's very, very mod-friendly. You can already tell where this is going. I found a mod for RimWorld. I think it's called PokeWorld, where what it does is it takes the, the whole game of RimWorld and it makes it so that you can catch Pokemon in it. And instead of like regular fighting in that game is like, you know, melee weapons and guns and laser rifles and whatever, um, 
Instead, it uses the game's built-in, like, a wildlife taming mechanic, where you could tame, like, bears and wild animals and stuff. Um, it uses some of that mechanic in conjunction with, like, adding Pokeballs to the game, and adding all Pokemon from Generations 1 through 4. So that's, like, something, like, I think just a hair under 900 Pokemon that are in this mod. Uh, they're all, like, fully drawn, full sprite art and everything from each angle. There's, like, Pokeball art in the game. I haven't played the mod yet. I looked at it a bit. I installed it to make sure it worked, and I loaded up, like, a fresh file of it so I could experiment with that sometime when I have a little more time. But that looks like it might be really, really fun. Probably not good for a challenge video, but... It could be really fun to do, like, some streams of it, some Let's Play videos of it, maybe stream it and then put the VODs up on the channel, because I normally just put up all my VODs on the channel here. I just put it up in the playlist section, so you can watch it there early before it's, like, public-public. Um, but, man, that could be really fun. It looks like a very fun mod. I just need to mess around with it some more and see exactly how it works and everything. But those of you who don't know RimWorld, it's like one of the most highly rated games on the entirety of Steam. It's a pretty universally beloved game by people who have played it. So there's a pretty good chance if you don't know what RimWorld is, as soon as you watch me play it a little bit with this Pokemon mod, you'll probably think it's pretty cool. Um, then you don't even need to know any of the RimWorld mechanics or anything. Uh, because I'm the one playing, so I can handle all of that. All you need to know is all the Pokemon stuff, which is really the fun, exciting part, considering, you know, that's the modification. That's that's the new thing. So I think that could be really fun. But I'm also planning on just streaming more RimWorld in general, uh, non-Pokemon-related RimWorld, regular RimWorld, just because it was one of the funnest games I've ever streamed in my life. It's one of my favorite games of all time in general, and I used to stream it a lot back in the day. That's how I originally got partnered on Twitch. That was before I was big on YouTube. Like, I was doing YouTube videos, obviously, but I only had like 50k subscribers, and there was only a few hundred people watching every single day. Um, so, you know, uh, pretty different than how things are now. That's how I got my Twitch partnership back in the day, though, was uh, I just was streaming RimWorld every single day, and we kept that high viewership. And it was uh, an accomplishment that I'm really, really proud of. Um, I'm rambling. Yeah, I want to stream more RimWorld. And I think I might also stream this RimWorld Pokemon mod. Because this Pokemon mod, it looks really cool. And man, any excuse to play more RimWorld, any excuse to play more RimWorld is a good excuse. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And until next time, have a nice day.